Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. My name is Ty with Mojo Plays, and this is the review recap for Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. If this is your first time listening, this is the Mojo Plays review recap. When you see a review uploaded on our channel, you can leave a question or comment under the reviews comment section. I grab a handful of them to read off and respond to here on the show. But before we get into what you've written in, I'd like to update you all on my time with the game post review. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long. So, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. So, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. I have touched a couple of times. Um, I haven't really been inclined to go back and try to 100% the game. Specifically because it's not really a pain in the butt to set up, but it's like... I'd much rather just boot up a game that's already installed on my computer rather than having to break out these cardboard sets and try and figure out a layout that's exciting for me. Like, I have been bringing it though whenever I go to visit family. Like, a couple weeks ago I went and saw my mom and she showed me her new cat and uh, I figured this was the perfect opportunity to bring this little RC car and see how this baby kitty uh, would react to a seemingly sentient plastic toy, <laughs> you know? It's been a, a nice toy to show off to the family and uh, also show off to some friends, but aside from that, uh, I haven't really been all that inclined to break it out again. My roommate and I really want to give it another go and see what else we can do with the house, like the living room as you may have seen in the second half of the review. We want to try and rearrange it and make a really cool course out of it. It's just, it's, it takes so much effort, you know? And on top of that, I've also been wanting to get Luigi, like, really, really badly, but the problem is, is Luigi's been out of stock for what feels like ages now. I know that they restocked them at one point, like a few days after the game launched. There's, there hasn't really been much to entice me uh, when it comes to breaking this game out. But now let's get over to the questions, comments, and criticisms. And speaking of criticisms, there is controversy in this review in terms of my vocal cords and how they have been rearranged by mother nature and science and whatnot. So let me get into those. Derek Vigo says, Jesus, can you sound any more sad and depressed? I, why actually I can. Hey guys, it's me, Tyler. Man, sometimes the world just, I, I don't know. Uh, Finnegan Lauren 27 asks, why does this guy sound like he just got punched in the stomach? Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Finnegan. Uh, I have been punched in the stomach before by my own sister. It was when we were little kids. I was playing a video game and she wanted to play something else. I said no. Next thing I know, I am winded and have to lay on the couch for a good hour. So, um, Craig McCulloch says he sounds so bored. Well, I have to ask, how bored do I sound? Do I sound bored like a board game? Do I sound bored like a wooden board, a board of wood? Or do I sound bored like... You know, like a board of chairmen, a board of executives. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I kind of recorded it at a really bad time in the day. Like, I had just woken up and was feeling super groggy that day. Um, I didn't mean to sound like I wasn't interested in that video. I genuinely was. It's just that I was... <laughs> I guess I just hadn't properly woken up. So, hopefully in this video I sound a little more lively. Uh, Prudent Gaming writes in with Nintendo has tried time and time again to mix video games with physical toys and they fail at every turn. It's a nice idea, but people who play video games want to do just that. I have to take umbrage with your response with uh, Nintendo failing at mixing video games with physical toys because in a way they've been exceeding them. I mean, Amiibo, they're, they're still making Amiibo these days, you know? Every time we go into a Smash Brothers Direct or any kind of Nintendo Direct or any Smash Brothers announcement, Sakurai typically brings up like a little prototype of an amiibo figure, so clearly they have to be selling, otherwise they wouldn't keep making them. On top of that, we had the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening amiibo last year, and I would say they're succeeding. I mean, I just bought an amiibo a couple weeks ago. I got King K. Rule with me right here. I think Nintendo does a fine job at mixing toys with games. It's just the problem is, is that they don't do much with them that's super interesting or engaging. So it's like with this Mario Kart thing, it it satisfies the child inside of me, 
But if you approach this as a video game, like a standard video game, something you can just pick up off the shelf and whatnot, you're gonna have a bad time. If you approach it as I am buying an RC car and it is Mario Kart themed and it has like these cool little enhancements to it, these features that make it play like a video game, then you might have a better time under that sort of uh, umbrella. Adriano Vasquez asks, how do you go from one of the greatest racing games of all time to this gimmicky and useless toy? Well, here's the thing, Adriano. Uh, don't use this as a measure of where Mario Kart is heading. This is the problem with spin-offs, right? Is that when a well-known publisher puts out a spin-off to a well-known game, a lot of people seem to come off this impression of, oh, now the franchise is gonna head in this direction. The purpose with spin-offs is that they are meant as a sort of period of experimentation. Uh, Harley Average writes in with, I hadn't thought about the small roster of only Mario and Luigi. It is just a toy, but there better be new models with Peach, Toad, and maybe Bowser. Yeah, Harley, I think I exercised this idea a little bit in the review, but the problem with that is how the cars are made. So I can't imagine Nintendo making a heck of a lot of profit from selling these things, you know? Um, there's a lot of tech that goes into building these things. These carts are very well made. They feel sturdy, they feel durable, but once you start introducing characters outside of Mario and Luigi, who knows how much your production cost is gonna ramp up. Toad might be the easier one, but once you start getting into more complex designs like Peach, Bowser, even Waluigi and Wario and Yoshi, like that's where your costs might end up increasing. Belmont Hunter writes in with, My biggest gripe with Nintendo games and consoles is they always feel gimmicky. I don't mind the ingenuity Nintendo comes up with, but the problem is that building a game or console around a gimmick limits it to that gimmick. So most of their games age poorly for me, honestly. Here's the problem, Belmont Hunter. Nintendo and gimmicks isn't really anything new. One could argue that almost every Nintendo game relies on a gimmick of some sort. That's kind of the appeal with video games in general, but with Nintendo, games like Pikmin, like Star Fox, and even Mario, all of those franchises have some sort of gimmick in every single sequel. So Star Fox has had its gameplay changed in just about every single entry since the GameCube days. And like I said, Mario himself has gone through a bunch of gimmicks, especially in recent games. And Mario Kart specifically, in every single game there has been a gimmick of some sort. Like, the earliest you could say, since we had Mario Kart in its purest form, was Mario Kart 64, where it was literally just racing. Once we hit Double Dash, that's where every single game got gimmicky. Double Dash had uh, the dual driving, and then you have Zero Gravity in Mario Kart 8. So, in a way, Home Circuit doesn't really feel gimmicky. It feels like, you know, another Mario Kart outing, just not a tried and true one. Bye -bye. S. Falcon says, Bro, I want this game so bad, but there were no pre-orders and it's sold out online everywhere. What the demonetized is this distribution? Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I've seen the game selling out and it's not just Luigi's kit, I've seen Mario's unavailable as well. Nintendo in distribution problems aren't really anything new. If you think back to in recent years, we had the mini NES and mini SNES problems where those things were selling out within minutes. So to me, the problem with this distribution, it's not at all surprising. And I can't even partially blame Nintendo for this, specifically because of the year it's been. You know, we've had coronavirus and we've had quarantining habits since March of this year. Like, I understand the frustration, but I also can't entirely blame Nintendo for the distribution, you know? George Hernandez says, I think the car needs to be Hot Wheels size for multiplayer and have at least 30 markers to create more courses. I like the idea, George. I think it would have worked really well, but here's the other thing. There's a problem with this product in regards to the tech and materials used to make the cart. There's so much going on in this little cart between having a battery life, uh, connecting to your Switch. It kind of goes back to what I said earlier in regards to production costs would ramp up. 
if they try downsizing it. I know we live in a world where GoPros exist, but this kind of tech is still somewhat pricey, even for a company as big as Nintendo. And on top of that, they'll have to anticipate how well this thing is going to sell, which I believe may also be contributing to the limited distribution. The only people who are gonna want this are either diehard fans of Mario Kart or their kids who think this thing is cool and they want one for Christmas. It's really here for a Christmas toy. And I think it's a pretty good one at that. But again, as a video game, not so much. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. This has been a Mojo Plays review recap. I know this is far shorter than the previous one. If there are any questions, comments, or criticisms about what we could do better here for Mojo Plays review recap, be sure to leave them here in the comments below. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ty. You can follow me on Twitter at GhostwriterTyler, and you can catch me streaming on twitch.tv slash WilhelmMedia. That's W-I-L-L-H-E-L-M-M-E-D-I-A. And I will see you all in the next review recap. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.